Hello Patriots and welcome to the channel again. Today I've got so much news for you. I've got more news than you can shake a stick at. I mean that. If you have a stick, by all means, don't shake it because it's just not going to do you any good. Well, today we're going to be talking about how Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir is in hot water. He is in some big time trouble. And let me tell you what has happened. Do you remember here about six months ago on Easter Sunday morning, Governor Bashir just declared you're not allowed to go to church. Oh, you're allowed to go to Walmart or to Kroger or Lowe's or anywhere on Easter Sunday morning. And any of those places might have hundreds of customers in the building at the exact same day, the same time, and that was fine, but you just weren't allowed to go to church. And he sent the Kentucky State Police, deployed them, used the man hours and their resources to put notices on people's cars in the church saying you may now face up to one year in jail and a $500 fine because you disobeyed me. Not because they broke a law. No law has been made. Just they disobeyed Andy Bashir. Well, the church took him to court saying, hey, you're the one breaking the law. You are violating the highest law of the Constitution on our freedom of religion and our freedom of assembly. And the court ruled in favor of the people. One of the judges in the ruling that day said that Andy Bashir was, quote, trampling the rights of Kentuckians. And so we were able to go back to church. However, a lot of people don't realize that Governor Bashir didn't let it go, and he had spent the last six months trying to re-argue this case and appeal it so that he can send these people to jail for a year and reclose down all of the churches in Kentucky. Well, this week, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, they had heard this case, and they issued the ruling, and they said, Governor Bashir, you're the one who broke the law. You can't be doing that. The people have the freedom of religion, they have the freedom of assembly, and they can go back to worship. Well, praise the Lord for that. However, because of this and the illegal actions that the governor has taken, the Kentucky State Treasurer, Allison Ball, reported to the Kentucky General Assembly yesterday during the Interim Joint Judiciary Committee on how the governor has misused official Kentucky taxpayer dollars by deploying the state police and some health departments to do things which have officially been declared twice over to be illegal, unconstitutional. Notice how Treasurer Ball puts it. There's no question that it's unconstitutional. Federal courts have been clear in their holdings that this is unconstitutional. So I don't have to figure out on my own, was this unconstitutional? It has already been held to be unconstitutional and other activity like this is unconst unconstitutional. Now, some of the Democrats in that committee were giving her a hard time saying, well, uh, the governor used the police and the health department, but uh, deploying them, it was only just a little bit of money that the governor misused, as if that makes it correct. It doesn't make it correct. Notice Treasurer Ball's response to this. And my job is to make sure that expenditures, whether they be a small amount or a large amount, it doesn't matter the amount, they don't violate the Constitution. I, I don't evaluate and do a balancing test. That wouldn't be my role really anyway, and, and I don't believe it's the role of the General Assembly um, to do a balancing test in the Constitution or, or anyone else who takes an oath to uphold the Constitution. It's not a balancing test when it comes to money. Uh, it's either unconstitutional or it's constitutional. She is quite correct. It doesn't matter if a little money was wasted or a lot. The point is, it was illegal. He has been convicted twice over of violating the law. The highest law, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly in our Constitution. I think the problem comes down to really a biblical principle. In Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number 16, it says, The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. Now, when it's talking about the prince here, that's the government official. In this case, we're talking about Governor Bashir. And it says, who wanteth understanding. It's not talking about desiring to understand. Want here is very similar to when there was the handwriting on the wall with King Belteshazzar, and he couldn't interpret it, and Daniel interpreted the writing on the wall, and it says that he had been weighed in the balances and found wanting meaning the king had been found coming up short in some things. Well, that's what it means here in Proverbs 28, 16. The prince, the governor, that is lacking understanding is going to be what? A great oppressor. And that's exactly what we have seen happening. The governor is not understanding the constitutional rights of freedom of religion, of freedom of assembly, and therefore he is being very oppressive. 
Now, during this committee meeting, not only have it come out that this is unconstitutional, but a second crime was annotated. I want you to notice one of the questions that was asked by one of the committee members, Kentucky State Representative Kevin Bratcher. He had a great question. Notice what he says. Were protest attendees ticketed in the same way? He's like, hey, there were people out there were doing protests, and I really like to call what they were doing riots. I believe that fits the qualification. Were these people treated the same way because they were gathering together, no social distancing? At that time, a lot of them not wearing any mask at all. Uh, were the, was the state police sent after them? And you know what the answer is? No, they weren't. And so we have very arbitrary enforcement of his mandates. To one group, the churchgoers, He'll enforce it, but people who aren't churchgoers, he's going to let them go. That is arbitrary, and that is against the law. Notice what the Kentucky Constitution says right here in section number two. It says, Absolute and arbitrary power over the lives and property of free men exists nowhere in a republic, not even in the largest majority. And so we have here, the governor is doing things in a very arbitrary manner. And then notice another concern. The state police were sent out to collect these people's license plates and get from that their addresses and phone numbers. And then another senator, Senator Mike Nemus, raises an excellent point. Notice his question. And I have a question of, we made a list of license plates and then from those license plates, we gathered their names and addresses. And I assume that that was the health department that, uh, that does that on occasion to be able to contact Trace. But where is this list being held? Do you know? Is it uh, the local health departments to be used for that? Or does the governor and KSP have it, which I don't think they should have a list of who uh, attends church? So these church attendees, private information was taken down, and they had these notices put on their cars. And the Kentucky Senate president, Robert Stivers, really nails down the threats that were made against these churchgoers. Notice what he said when he's questioning Treasurer Ball in the committee meeting yesterday. Secretary Ball, you said that these notices were placed on people's car saying that they could be subjected to one year in jail and a $500 fine? Class A misdemeanor. That's right. It's what a Class A misdemeanor is, one year in jail. Treasurer Ball went on to say Kentuckians should never be faced with a, with a misdemeanor when they want to go to church. So let's define what is a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor legally is defined as a crime less serious than a felony. Felonies are very spelled out, so this is kind of a good catch-all. And misdemeanor really translates to bad behavior toward others. And so the governor was threatening churchgoers with a misdemeanor. And it's very interesting that he used the things to qualify as a misdemeanor. Bad attitudes towards others, bad actions. When the court said, no, governor, not them, you are the one who is guilty of that. And that plays a big role into why the governor is now in super hot water. Notice what the Kentucky Constitution says in section number 68. The governor and all civil officers shall be liable to impeachment for any misdemeanors while in office. And that's what we have the governor being guilty of, a misdemeanor. And the Senate President Stivers nails this down again. Notice how he put it. The governor, or that case referenced the fact that the governor was availing himself of First Amendment rights, of freedom of speech, and access to the press, but denying churches the ability to freely meet and express their freedom of religion. Is that the case that you're talking about there? The, yes, I believe so, yes. And so that's basically over, correct? It's race judicata, if you want to use that term. Yes. Fair? Yes. So the governor has not appealed. He's acquiesced, basically, that he violated the federal constitution when issuing this order. Is that fair? Yes, I, okay. I believe so. 
So it's not a question that's up for debate. The courts have decided that he is guilty. The president of the Senate used the term race justica. That is Latin, and it means the matter is determined. It's no longer up for debate. The courts have officially ruled twice now that he did violate it. He is guilty of misdemeanors. However, that is not the only reason that would be an impeachable offense. Do you remember this year, Andy Bashir put all these people out of work and there was no money to pay the unemployment insurance. So he borrows more than $800 million in the name of Kentucky. Now, here's the problem with that. Notice what it says in Section 49 of the Kentucky Constitution. The General Assembly may contract debts to meet casual deficits or failures in the revenue. Notice who is given authority to incur debt for the state. It is not the judicial branch. It is not the executive branch, which would be the governor. It is the legislative branch. They are the only ones that are legally allowed to incur debt. And the governor incurred more than three quarters of a billion dollars of debt on his own signature, which he had zero legal authority to do. That is a misdemeanor. But he's also violated this in a second way. Notice what else it says in Section 49 of the Constitution. Such debts, direct or contingent, singly or in the aggregate, shall not at any time exceed $500,000. And the governor borrowed more than $800 million all at one time. Therefore, doubly violating Section 49 of the Kentucky Constitution being another impeachable offense. What we have right now is a governor who has demonstrated a great lack of respect for legislative intent of the emergency laws that governors have. We have a governor who has demonstrated a great disrespect for the General Assembly, refusing to let them be a part of this conversation and to have anything to do with what's going on to help mitigate the current events. He has shown that he doesn't care about the separation of powers, and as the judge says, he has trampled the rights of Kentuckians. Now, some of you out there may say, Brother Lee, this is it's kind of strong words from you. Uh, and yes, it is. It's not my normal jovial tone that I, I often use, and that's what I really enjoy using. But there's a reason for this. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7 says, Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. The Bible is very correct. And oppression will make you mad. And if that's the response that you've had, you know what? The Bible says that's to be expected. That's natural. And whenever we have someone who is violating the rights of Kentuckians, I take that seriously. Specifically when they're violating your religious liberty rights, I take that matter extremely seriously. What we have right now is a governor who has violated the highest law in the land and has had no repercussions. All they've done is said you can't do that anymore. Whenever the Constitution is attacked and no nothing stops the attack, it weakens the Constitution. We must defend the Constitution before it's too weak to defend us. I hope the members of the Kentucky General Assembly will keep all of this in mind when they go back into session in January. I hope this video has been very informative for you and that you'll share it with people. And until next Friday for the next video, I'm Lee Watts for Patriot Point. Stand strong and breathe free.